Other interesting culturally news, yeah, Bud Light score seat video is mostly roasted. Now this comes as Bud Light spends an exponentially increasing amount of money on marketing as a futile attempt to win back some customers. Their sales have not reflected that yet. It'll be fascinating to see their Q4 fiscal results as they those come out in the next couple of weeks. Now, this is a short video of one of the Mannings as well as, what was it, Super Bowl Hall of Famer, the sports balls guy, Emmett. And they appear to be happy in a bar. And there's text before this little short rudimentary video. The text says, quote, us rolling up to a bar for the wild card games, knowing we still have more Super Bowl tickets ups for grabs, post hashtag score a seat and hashtag sweepstakes to enter your chance to score a ticket to see the Super Bowl. Click here to learn more. And I don't know if the video is broken, but it looks like it's, and it's only 14 seconds long, but it looks like it's almost on a loop. So it looks like, no, how pathetic is that? These gentlemen didn't even suit up. Pathetic, ridiculous. As we all know, men should always suit up. You always look your best. So they appear to be wearing some type of outdoor jacket and maybe a long sleeve sweater. And they're at a bar. Let's see if there's even any video. Let's see. So they don't have video or they don't have audio. One, two, three. So it's literally the same. What is it? One, two, three, four, one, three, four, one, two, three, four. So they repeat. So it's a four second clip that they repeat four times in a row. And it's just this gentleman catching a can of Bud Light in presumably a bar, which. Again, if you ever throw a can of Bud Light, which I do not recommend, it's not safe because not only could you hit someone in the head, but even worse and more detrimental to their health, it may break upon their head or it may break in the air and some Bud Light may actually get into their mouth. Heaven forbid, that'd be the worst case scenario. That's why I never recommend throwing any Bud Light at all. Perhaps I would recommend gently dropping it into the can or the garbage or as what the people British call it, the dustbin. But nevertheless, they're throwing a can of beer, and this Football Hall of Famer is catching the beer. But not only is that dangerous, but if you were to open it, it would presumably explode because of the carbonation. You're shaking it up. So I don't understand. And they're not throwing it like a football. You don't see, like, there's not, like, a spin on it. It's literally just the same four-second clip. They're throwing a beer. He catches it. And I, I don't know if that's one of the Manning brothers next to him. It's another guy in a sweater. And there's a couple of cowboy hats in the background. And it's just so... I mean, perhaps it's pers perhaps it's good there's no volume because it gets your attention. It makes you think the video is broken. You pay more attention. Sometimes, kind of like how visual advertisements are sometimes more compelling in video when they're in black and white because you don't expect it. So it kind of gets your attention. So maybe that's what they're going for. But just, it doesn't seem very compelling. And they're saying you can win, you know, Score a seat and you hashtag so you win sports ball tickets, which that used to be their target market. And presumably, again, they still have 70% of their previous sales. So they'd probably still have some sports balls fans who follow the company and they like it. But again, that within 24 hours, that got, let me look at it right now from statistics here. It got 13,000 views. So a little better than usual. There's a little bit of improvement there. Not to brag, but I got, uh, 3,000 views on a video I made a couple weeks ago. But it's all about quality over quantity, obviously. I had the best viewers, bar none. And they got 202 likes, which I haven't beat that yet. But, or no, maybe? Probably not. However, if you like this video, it'll help with YouTube and the Rumble algorithms. It might get shared more. And shoot, I think this deserves more likes than a Bud Light video. I mean, not to toot my own horn, but at least I'm not too hard on the eyes in terms of not showing you a can of Bud Light which many would say might melt your eyes. Very similar to the Indiana Jones film in which they open the Ark of the Covenant and all their eyes melt and they, you know, they all die. I can't help but think that's a not 0% possibility that could happen if you were to, in real life, in person, see a can of Bud Light being opened. Because again, if, you, if a can is opened in front of you, some could explode and some of that liquid could get onto your eyeball, which, heaven forbid, I don't know what would happen next. Now, again, there's, let's see, 200... <laughs> Excuse me. Looks like there's 220 comments. 
Now, granted, most of them, spoiler alert, they are roasting it, and then even more of them are just brainless people who want free stuff. It's not at all persuasive marketing. It's not building a relationship with the brand. It's not getting people excited to, to go back to the brand. It's just people who want free stuff. Because we'll check out a couple of these. We'll do some anecdotal research right here, but when we look at these sweepstakes and seed rates before, every single time we've looked at someone who responds to these sweepstakes, you look at their profile, they just do it for every company. So they just want free stuff. They don't even care if it's Bud Light. Now, again, I don't know who's left in the, in the I don't know how inebriated they are if there are people left in the Bud Light marketing department, but if you actually want to build a brand again, do something where there's a contingency to actually get people to show they enjoy drinking Bud Light. Now, I don't know if that's possible because perhaps a more appropriate term would be a picture of people tolerating a can of Bud Light, but a better marketing plan would be, hey, if you win a case of Bud Light, you know, send us a picture of you enjoying it with your friends at some sports balls game, and then we'll enter you in a chance to win a ticket, or we'll give you a case of this free swill. I don't know what you do with that free case of beer, but that would at least get more people excited about the brand, give them more of an incentive to get that brand association with average people enjoying it or tolerating it more likely. Again, I, I was going to say, I don't know if any marketing genius can turn around the Bud Light business plan of the century, but I mean, there could be, their marketing could be more persuasive. Now, culturally speaking, I don't think they're going to win back these fans anytime soon, but let's go in the comments and find out. Let's see here. So again, someone by the name of CJ Sign, she says, hashtag score seat, hashtag sweepstakes. And again, I don't know who's working at Bud Light, but they didn't even like her post. So they did respond to her. So they have a modicum of intelligence. So they said, you know, be sure to go to this website and sign it out for your entry. Now looking at her profile, she is, she joined X in 2010, says 516 followers. And let's see, she is, Mentally vacuous. She just wants free stuff. Every, everything from gaming keyboards to what is this crap? Mountain Dew apparel, which I guess they're interesting. They're still around as a brand. Webcams, key, Myus keyboard lights, Bud Light, like, like just watches. Like every giveaway you could possibly comprehend. Flex Seal. She even did a retweet for Flex Seal to try to win a can of Flex Seal. Again, I'm not saying it's not a good product, but this person just retweets it. So again, this person isn't a Bud Light fan. They're a free fan. They just want free stuff. And there will always, want, there will always be people who want free stuff. When leveraged properly, it can be a way to build a brand and build sales. Well, truth be told, my IT company gave away a free flamethrower with every uh, Q4 purchase. Now, there are contingencies, so the revenue had to be a point so we weren't losing money on it. But... That was a persuasive way to get new customers. It's fun, it's unique. We did offend a couple of people who didn't like it. You're never gonna get 100% market share unless you're the government or near Microsoft, but that was much more effective. And yet, again, I'm not seeing how this actually builds the brand or gets their sales back to where it used to be or in any way improves it. Now, as I scroll down to see, you know, maybe there's some real ones in here. <clears throat> Let's see here. Again, these are also getting no likes. Let's see here. Yorkie mom. She said, hashtag, you know, hashtag free crap. Even my pup is getting in the action. So she's encouraging animals to drink Bud Light, which is a sure way to kill the animal and most humans. And kidding a little bit. She has a can. It's a plush can. It says Pup Light, which again, I, I actually thought Bud Light would be pissed and be like, well, we're going to sue this company because I believe the jet. There's a company who did that same parody for Jack Daniels where they had a, a Jack Daniels like plush bottle for an animal. I think the Supreme Court, I want to say they side with Jack Daniels because it was a clear, the same design of the bottle, the same shape, the same font. In this case, it looks exactly the same. They just changed Bud to Pup. So if that's not an official product, I'd actually be curious if they don't sue this company that's making it. And let's go to the Yorkie mom to see if it's a real person and they just want free stuff. So this person does have 3,641 followers, though I would argue my 320 followers are much better. Again, quality over quantity, obviously. And she joined in 2015, so it's not like it's a new profile created yesterday to make Bud Light look good, or attempt to. And if you go to her profile, she, again, mentally vacuous. Well, the first thing she retweets is, 25 $500 winners repost this video, and maybe you'll win. Which, no. Let's see here. And I scroll down more and more, and she is 
again, all about freebies. Now, I guess you could argue this is a better response because she actually did a, a real picture, and so that contributed something to the thread. But still, they just want free stuff. Again, no one liked that. Even more pathetic. So scrolling down, the first comment that got any likes, and this got 19 likes, mind you, so that's pretty... I mean, that's perhaps might be the most popular one. This comes from Tom Ferry, though a little bit of a F minus for marketing. If his name is Tom, he is not riding a ferry on the lake. So this alleged Tom Ferry says, quote, pass on this tranny water, boycott still on, unquote. Now granted, he is, he is much more bombastic than I. He used one, two, three, four exclamation points, mind you. That got 19 likes. And as I scroll down, Again, tons of people saying, you know, hashtag score seat, free sweepstakes, all that stuff. And no likes. Let's see here. Let's scroll down and see what other real. So again, here, as I keep scrolling, I found another comment. This is the first one that got any likes at all. <clears throat> so there's a huge gap in the comments. It's free, 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 free. Now there's another comment that actually got likes and interaction, which again, Part of social media is the interaction. That's how you make it more persuasive, more interesting. And this person says, their profile name is C. Mill. This person says, quote, no apology, <coughs> excuse me, no apology and celebrity sellouts. Your customers are blue collar Americans, not coastal elites, unquote. Person got 12 likes. And also brings across another good point. Bud Light had actually opened up marketing offices, I believe in New York City as well prior to the Bud Light Business Blunder of the Century where they hired, you know, Bill Mulvaney, paid an individual $185,000 for like two pictures and a video, which to advertise to kids, I mean, I don't know how mentally vacuous Alyssa Heiderschild is, but pretty, pretty vacuous to say the least. And again, the no disconnect, not, and again, it's not always, but the more you move away from customer geographically, sometimes you can lose that disconnect, that personal touch. And there are huge cultural differences in the United States. I mean, California and Texas are very, very different, thankfully. And New York, New York City is very different than, I would argue, most people who consume Bud Light in general. Not that one is better or worse. Well, I would say Texas is better than California, obviously. So, sometimes it is better or worse. But nevertheless, you do get sometimes that disconnect with a customer. And this person brings, brings that point back. Which I'm actually surprised not more people have actually driven that point home of saying, hey, I mean, again, it's a multi-billion dollar national company headquartered in Belgium. They don't just make waffles. They also make, apparently, well, they do make good rifles and pistols, but they also are the parent company behind Bud Light. Andrew Bush. It's why it's called Anheuser Bush in Bev. But again, I mean, they used to be known for, you know, they had the allure, they had the marketing profile of a company that seemed like a good Missouri base. It was a, a small, it almost, because again, it started off as a family owned business. It had that allure in that people thought it was a small bomb and pop business, but it was actually very, very big in reality. So it, it was a fascinating place they used to occupy as a brand, culturally speaking, but that disconnect just keeps going more and more. And we'll scroll down to see if there's any other real comments. Let's see here. <coughs> Excuse me. Barty W says, quote, Do I need to wear a dress like Dylan in order to enter? Unquote. I got six likes. And now we got, what, 10, 20, 30 more comments that are literally just hash the hashtags so like win free crap. Someone, let's see here. And none of these are getting likes. I mean, a majority of these comments get zero likes. I mean, shoot, statistically speaking, this video will get at least more than zero. I mean, not to be too optimistic, but it should at least get one like, I would presume. Hopefully. Knock on wood. Let's see here. Mr. Nard says, quote, how come they are not dressed as little girls, unquote, getting four likes. Let's see here. Chris Walker simply says, no thanks, unquote, getting two likes. Let's see here. Now, I don't know why they censor this. So, on, on you guard said, you know, the hashtag, and then they had a picture, but the picture is just a screenshot of a post from Bud Light with Again, I'm not a sports balls aficionado. I just know Tom Brady wins Super Bowls. But I believe that's a Hall of Famer they said in the video, Emmett. And he's just holding a can of Bud Light. It's just a screenshot of the Bud Light post. And Bud Light censored that? that and again, it's not a pejorative Photoshop or anything. It's literally just an old post. And as I continue to scroll down more and more, 
I mean, just nothing. So, I mean, again, I don't know if they're capturing this data. Like, they're keep, now Bud Light has a database of all the people that they could resend stuff out to. I guess that is, I mean, data mining, there is a value to that on the back end. But, again, I'm not sure if these are per really persuasive. I don't know if it's really valuable data. I mean, one of the best examples is one of my favorite races I do throughout the year is the BMW sponsored Dallas Half Marathon, or some people do the marathon, ultra. I usually like to do the half. But so this is where they do have a questionnaire. They ask, like, hey, when was the last time you purchased a vehicle? Are you in the market to buy a vehicle? And everyone that goes to the event, they get like some freebies. They have the, the um, BMW display of all their new vehicle. Well, all their boring vehicles this year, they're all EVs. And they have a single stick shift, which for BMW, the ultimate driving machine, that's the most successful. Longest lasting advertising campaign in automotive history, literally. They didn't have a single stick shift there. They didn't have any of their performance charts, but blundered in and of itself. But they have this, all these booths where like they'll take your information and they'll give you like a BMW branded, what was it? Like they give away like water bottles and like power little chargers. But is that really valuable data? I mean, you're capturing people who like to run, but I'm not sure if they're in the market for, you know, 80,000 or 80,000 plus dollar BMW. So again, a lot of companies will spend money to gather data, but every sample size is different and all this data, I don't know how valuable it is even worth. So again, I understand Bud Light is having all these people go online and register for the event, but I mean, when you, we are looking at this in real time and I mean, most of the people who are registering and the ones that are just copy pasting the hashtags, they're just people who want free stuff. They're not loyal to the brand i mean if miller lighter or a competitor of course if another brand had sweet states they'd do that too so i don't think it's going to translate to real world sales at the end of the day and we'll do one or two more uh re at um little uh, quotes for here but it just seems ridiculous now joseph rose said quote i'm not gonna i'll alter his text so it's not as offensive um he says quote Hard pass on the Q beer, quote unquote, the Q being the pejorative word for people in the homosexual community. And he has a picture that says, put real heroes on beer cans, unquote. And it's a picture of Kyle Rittenhouse on a poorly photoshopped on a, ca on a can of PBR beer, which in terms of heroes, he did just have, the people he did happen to shoot is big, there was a huge cultural controversy in the United States when it happened. Well, he was defending himself and he just happened to hit, what was it? Uh, try, I try to keep this moderately kid-friendly. He happened to injure the most morally vacuous type of person on the planet is people who attack children. So he, he just, of the people he did shoot to defend his life, they happened to be the worst people on the planet, morally speaking. Um, that did get seven likes, though, on the X. See here? Oh, Zuma. I'm actually shocked this was not censored. So this is a picture of Alyssa Heyerschild smiling, who... That, that could very well be a contest. Who has the worst, most awkward smile? Ron DeSantis, Dylan Mulvaney, Alyssa Hirschild, or me? They're, they're all pretty bad, I'm not going to lie. But, I don't know, hers just looks ultra, a little ultra creepy to me. And the caption behind her is, Too fratty for me, bro, unquote. Which, again, she famously said in an interview that she thought Bud Light was fratty. She wanted to change that image. That little meme, and she does have the trans flag on her lapel. And that got 11 likes. Now, interestingly enough, when they were in damage control when this first happened, Bud Light censored everything around Alyssa Hirschhout, I suspect, because they were worried about lawsuits, which they shouldn't. They shouldn't have to be worried about lawsuits when someone destroys your brand. Again, the sales are gone by 30% for that one brand specifically, and Budweiser around 10%, 11% on average, maybe 12 some weeks, and Michelob Ultra, the other top brand being hit, between 3 and 5% lower sales week over week. And we'll do one more. Let's see here. Acoustically, simply says, never, ever, ever again, not even if you apologize, unquote, getting three likes. So again, as youth might say, they're viscerally ratioed since every real comment was all pejorative. And everyone else just wanted freebies. So I guess the only surprising part is that it was not as censored as usual. But again, I'm not seeing this really increase their brand awareness it's not increasing their sales for sure it's just getting attention of people who want free stuff so i mean at the end of the day i just i don't see that as valuable use of marketing dollars but 
I'd love you know in the comments. It'd be fascinating to hear what you have to say. What could they do to change their brand or turn things around? I mean, culturally speaking, it seems, again, social media, look at the sales data, the boycott is st still very much on, but I'm not sure what, if anything, they could do to reverse that trend. But I would be fascinated to hear what you have to say. Thank you again for taking the time to tune in today. Again, we're trying to get to 4,000 subscribers by the end of January. So if you click that button, I greatly appreciate it. Also, leaving a comment is a great way to give me some feedback. Let me know how I could improve the show. Liking the video also is greatly appreciated since it helps with the YouTube and Rumble algorithms so the video gets more shared. Also, don't forget to take time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers. Heck, tell, me, tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone. Just stay safe. Fight the good fight.